every once in a while, there is a product which misses the mark upon initial release, and only after reflection years later do you realize how unique it really was. Sometimes companies experiment with a new concept, which on paper looks groundbreaking, but they end up ruining the product's reception with a high price and terrible explanation of what the product is supposed to do. Today, we take a look at the Sennheiser Ambio Smart headset. This little product was released at the end of 2017 with an MSRP of about $300. I'm going to say a few things right off the bat. The Ambio is currently $80 on Amazon in limited stock. Whether or not you like the headphones sound quality, the microphone integration is indeed a groundbreaking concept. If you're an iPhone filmmaker, this is a product you want to take a close look at, especially at the current price. And if you are an Android user, there might be a way for you to use the Ambio as well. In short, I am going to recommend the Ambio at the end of this video, and I will explain why throughout the entirety of this video. There is no question in my mind that Sennheiser Ambio Smart headset was a concept that should have been refined, but now is essentially dead. And those who like to collect unique audio gear or those who need a more unassuming microphone for mobile filmmaking, you all should take a hard look at the Ambio. Sennheiser marketed the Ambio as a binaural headset with 3D recording capability. In other words, this wired headset has typical dynamic drivers tuned to Sennheiser specifications and two microphones for recording. The IEM portion has a frequency response of 15Hz to 22kHz. The microphone response is 30Hz to 20kHz. The microphone pickup pattern is omnidirectional. In simple terms, the IEM portion recreates sounds within the audible human perception. The microphone portion records audio that digs deeper than the $400 3DO binaural rig. While recording, you want to minimize hiss and hum, which are around the 60Hz or below mark, depending on the particular sound. So while the 3DO might be a better option if you're trying to limit unwanted lower register noise, the Ambio is probably aiming towards a more full recording of the environment. The Ambio has tight integration with Apogee. If you're in the professional recording business, you have heard of Apogee. These guys make software and hardware that can easily cost several hundred if not a few thousand dollars. Sennheiser partnered with Apogee to include Apogee's pure digital technology. This is circuitry that tries to record audio in its purest form and transfer it to the Apple devices. At least that's what the vague claim is on Apogee's website. The Ambio's fullest potential is unleashed after you download the Sennheiser Ambio and Apogee Meta Recorder apps for your mobile devices. We will get to these later. As for build, the Ambio is plastic and basically rubber. The cable is attached and cannot be changed. There is an integrated ear hook that is pliable enough for a secure fit. The Ambio comes with a few ear tips of different sizes. You can readily see the microphone placement which is on the outside of the ear tip housing. The metal mesh acts as wind noise reducer. The cable has a small junction box. This is Apogee's circuit integration. This box lets you control playback and volume. There is a slider which can be programmed to launch an app and start recording. And the Ambio junction box also has a button for active noise cancellation. However, as we have come to find, the noise cancellation is basically meaningless. On the cable running down the right ear tip, there is another small junction box. This one contains a microphone for voice calls only. The Ambio connects with Apple's lightning jack. There is no 3.5mm or USB-C connectivity. The overall build is light and reasonably robust. With some care, the Ambio should remain fairly pristine. The junction box, to my surprise, does not pull the ear tips out of my ears. However, it can get snagged on clothes. The fit is secure and fairly comfortable. The notable issue for many will be the lightning connector. I know many audiophiles complain about Apple and claim to use only Android for serious mobile listening. It is a shame that Sennheiser never got around to releasing a USB-C version of this headset. But Anchor did get involved and released an adapter that reportedly works. This is the Anchor Lightning to USB-C adapter which Apogee and Sennheiser tested with the Ambio. I do not have this adapter yet, but have linked it in the description section below. Overall, the Ambio is a utilitarian design. There are no frills. 
For the original $300 MSRP, I would say Sennheiser's marketing and development teams were out of their minds. But at $80, there is absolutely nothing about the build and features to gripe over. You should listen to the entirety of this section dealing with sound signature. There are several things which you might find particularly interesting, especially about detail and soundstage. In order to test the sound signature of this IEM portion, I plugged the Ambio into my iPhone 12 Pro Max. I played music through Amazon Music HD. I used the stock ear tips. I set the Ambio app's EQ to flat. I turned noise cancellation off, although it frankly doesn't make any difference. First and foremost, the Ambio gets loud with the iPhone. I usually did not need to exceed 50-60% to 60 volume. The Ambio's bass response is rolled off, but has about natural reverberation. In Mountains by Hans Zimmer, the Ambio was not able to fully recreate the sub-bass rumble at the beginning of the song. Even at near maximum volume, the IEM's presentation of that rumble was barely audible. When the crescendo hit at the middle of the track, the Ambio provided a crisp, clear rendition of the organ. That instrument cut through the rest without being harsh. The rolling thunder effect at this point was quite subdued. In Conquer by Overwork, the Ambio displayed the rolling marble effect at the beginning. This sound is supposed to pan from the right to the left to center. However, the Ambio kept the sound dead center. There are multiple drums in this track and the Ambio made all of them sound clear and audible. It appeared that the mid bass slam was close to neutral. Each drum had a hard impact without being boomy. The synth also was not harsh. I listened to several hip-hop songs like New Patek, Reel It In, Uproar, and Pure Water. On each occasion, the Ambio underrepresented the sub bass. Indeed, the subwoofer effect in all of these tracks was recessed, and it sounded like the subwoofer was in another room altogether. Vocals remained clear and were easily two steps ahead of the instruments. They had slightly elevated vocal sparkle, but this was not fatiguing. The mids are slightly forward, and there is emphasized sibilance. In Why Am I Like This by Orla Gartland, this track has natural grain and sibilance recorded into it. The Ambio pushed Orla's voice ahead a few steps compared to the instruments. The grain sounded about neutral, but the sibilance was clearly elevated. It was just below my personal pain threshold and reminded me a lot of the sibilance in the HD560S. The drums and guitar had natural timbre and decay, but they seemed to be further back into the mix. In Want You Back by Haim, the Ambio again emphasized the sibilance in the primary vocalist. It was just below my personal pain threshold. The Ambio, however, clearly represented the two backup vocalists who in their individual tonalities. Even when all the instruments played at maximum, all three vocalists remained clear, and upon close inspection, I could hear all three of their different tonalities. At 8 seconds into this song, the primary singer also says the word we and drags it out, making it sound gravelly. The Ambio rendered detail accurately. The piano, drums, guitar, and bass all sounded correct with natural timbre. However, they were clearly recessed compared to the vocals. In Superposition by Young the Giant, the Ambio correctly rendered the ukulele and drums. The bass was recessed but still audible. The Ambio elevated sibilance in the male vocalist. This was not quite as much as with female vocalists, but still rather noticeable. There is a backup vocalist in this track, and the Ambio did make his voice audible. And this is quite the feat, considering most headphones and IEMs I have tested missed this detail. Between 1 minute and 10 and 1 minute and 20 seconds into this track, there are supposed to be sharp intakes of breaths. The Ambio perfectly recreated this detail as well. Treble on the Ambio appears to be neutral and clear. In Skirtso for X-Wings, the Ambio accurately recreated the horns and brass. These instruments cut through the rest without becoming harsh. They retained their nasally signatures as well. The timpani was underemphasized, though still audible. There were good separation among group sets and above average rendition of depth. In other words, the Ambio allowed some group sets to sound closer than others and some were in the extremes. In Flight from the City, the Ambio made the piano sound as if it was about 10 feet away from me. The bassier notes were underemphasized. I could hear the electric buzz effect and pop and sizzle that is recorded into this track. The cello sounded smooth and had accurate timbre. There was a slight melding between it and the piano. I could hear the creaking of wood on the pianist's bench and the shifting of the cello's weight. 
In Take 5 by the Dave Brubeck Quartet, the Ambio rendered the piano in the right, the drum kit in the left, and the saxophone dead center. The bass was somewhere in the mix, and a little bit recessed. The bass was rolled off and lost a bit in the track. Drum strikes were precise and accurate. The saxophone was energetic, and I think it sounded neutral. There was above-average separation of all the instruments. Though there was slight melding among notes, it was easy to hear all the elements in the mix. As for detail retrieval, the Ambio does a fine job providing obvious and some subtle details. The Ambio's overall clarity does help bring out micro-details. The creaking of wood, shifting of the cello, nasally signatures of brass and horns, multiple vocalists, electric buzzing, pops and sizzles, and breathing are all easily audible. For a more quantitative test, I use the song New Light by Kazuki. This track has layers of details, including the sound of children, wind, rustling of grass, synth, and footsteps. I count the number of footsteps I can hear in the first 60 seconds. The Blonde BL03 presents 5 to 6 footsteps. The Tin Hi-Fi T2 presents 7 to 8. The T2 Plus and the Blonde BL05S present 6 to 7. And the Ambio presents 12 footsteps. I have to emphasize how unusual this is for an IEM. I have never before heard an IEM from anyone at any price category that has provided as much detail as the Ambio on this test track. Indeed, with regard to detail retrieval, the Ambio's performance rivals that of the Hi-Fi Matsundara and outstrips the Odyssey LCD-1, the Sennheiser HD6XX and 660S, and to say nothing of the much-hyped Neumann NDH-20. The clarity and resolution, the crisp details, that the Ambio provides is quite an achievement. But there is always a cost to performance, and for the Ambio, the cost is full bass presentation. As for soundstage, the Ambio easily rivals the soundstage of the Tin Hi-Fi T2. In my estimation, I think that the Ambio has above average to maybe slightly below wide soundstage. This will depend heavily upon your original recording and the ear tips that you're using. There is at least above average instrument placement where width is concerned. The Ambio, however, does not present verticality. In other words, the Ambio shows instruments and vocals at different depths. One element might sound closer or further away, and some may appear to be coming from the fringes. But I never heard a sound below or above my head. Overall, the Ambio sound signature is not going to appeal to everyone. The bass roll-off, vocal push, and sibilance will turn some people against this product. But, in exchange, you do get fairly wide soundstage and excellent detail reproduction. The Ambio's full features can be unlocked with the Sennheiser Ambio app. This is a fairly straightforward application that is still available on the Apple App Store. This app will provide firmware updates. After I launched the Sennheiser app for the first time, I was prompted to install the latest firmware. The app also lets you control ANC, recording level, EQ, set the custom action for the smart slider, and turn voice prompts on or off. A few features are worth talking about. The recording level adjustment lets you choose between natural and reduced level. Natural simply captures audio at the Ambio's normal gain. However, with reduced level, it appears that the Ambio will apply attenuation so that the loud noises won't immediately blow out your recording. The EQ section is fairly limited. You get to choose among four presets, and there's an option to set your own custom EQ. However, the custom EQ adjustment is only a graph which includes three selection points. This severely limits any custom equalization that you may want to perform. The smart slider is the trigger on the Apogee Junction box that lets you launch different apps. The Lit Apple Camera, Apogee Meta Recorder, Filmic Pro, Voice Memos, Heiser app, app, Switch Mic Recording Levels, and Mute Telephone Mic. Obviously, you must have these other apps installed before you're able to launch them. The Apogee Meta Recorder is a mobile audio recording tool. It is fully integrated with the Ambio. With the Ambio connected and the Meta Recorder launch, you can see the left and right channels at the bottom of the screen. Unfortunately, this app does not allow you to control the mic levels. This seems to be a rather callous limitation. This is like a camera without aperture control. On the brighter side, you can use Filmic Pro. 
because this app does have an option to manually control audio gain, and this works just fine with the Ambio. The standout feature of the Ambio are its binaural microphones. What can you achieve with this product? I looked at Sennheiser's marketing for the Ambio to get an idea of what they were aiming for. Sennheiser shows that the Ambio should capture audio all around you. The pickup distance is an unanswered question, but I would guess that the microphones work best when the subject is within 5 feet. I watched other reviews of the Ambio and noticed some odd methodologies. For example, one well-known reviewer tested the microphones but by sitting in his living room and recording his speakers. And that, I think, is hardly a fair measure of the Ambio's performance. Because of the pandemic, large gatherings are still not allowed in my area. Consequently, I was not able to record in public gatherings. I set up two tests which I hope will provide some information about the microphone's capabilities. The first test was conducted with Filmic Pro. I recorded a series of videos with the Ambio as the microphone source. The audio was recorded in PCM at 48 kHz. Voice processing was off and automatic gain correction was active. This test was done on a trail where you should hear a creak on one side, footsteps and other natural sounds that happen to occur. The second test was not much more technical. I taped the Ambio to a yoga block and placed it about 3 feet above the floor on a table. I was in a 12 foot by 20 foot room. I used the Apogee Meta Recorder in 24-bit at 48kHz in broadcast wave format. I used my limited acting skills and gave basically a soliloquy. The idea is that the Ambio on the yoga block represents James Bond strapped to a chair and I am his antagonist. In the first test, you should have a basic idea of the types of sounds that the Ambio can pick up. In the second test, you should be able to tell whether the Ambio's microphones are capable of recording distance, height, echo, and detail. You will have to excuse my very bad acting skills and terrible made-up soliloquy. You should listen and watch the following portions with headphones. Do not listen to this audio over speakers as that will not provide a true representation of the Ambio's performance. And by the way, I did not add any processing to these recordings. These are raw from the iPhone. James Bond, I presume. Now hold on, you might be wondering why you can't see or speak, and the simple reason is because I've had your eyes and your mouth taped shut. I really did not want to go through all your witticisms and your British humor. Now, you are laying on a cold slab, and a few moments ago, before you awoke, I inserted a hypodermic needle into your left arm. Perhaps you felt a little nick. That hypodermic needle contained a particular poison of my own deviation, and it is coursing through your body as I speak. In the next few moments, all your vital organs will stop, and you will die.
What I noticed is that the Ambio does record distance and decay. Height or verticality is more difficult to capture. Nevertheless, the audio recordings seem to be crisp and clear, though are not substitutes for proper studio microphones. The Ambio is not a huge battery drain on your iOS device. Over the course of three hours of continuous listening, the Ambio perhaps had a slight impact on battery life. It's difficult to say precisely, but I'd estimate it was a 5% decrease overall. The greater drain comes from the applications you are using. Whether it is Spotify, Amazon Music HD, Quo Buzz, Filmic Pro, or Meta Recorder, the battery will drain much faster when any one of these apps is active rather than the Ambio by itself. Also, keep in mind the age of your device. Batteries tend to drain faster as their charge cycles reach a certain point, and this is different for every device. The Ambio evidently has active noise cancellation that you can activate from the Junction Box or the Ambio app. Unfortunately, this noise cancellation feature does not seem to make any audible difference. The feature does not appear to affect the binaural recordings or the IEM audio output. The Sennheiser marketing and manual are silent as to what the noise cancellation is supposed to affect. In all honesty, the noise cancellation feature on the Ambio is completely useless. The Sennheiser Apogee relationship seems to be very interesting. You had two audio companies collaborating to release a product that was fundamentally different from everything else. But, as you have probably realized by now, the Ambio was not a financial success for either company. Sennheiser seems to have basically dropped the idea. There's hardly a mention of this device on Sennheiser's website. This headset is hard to find in retailers. I think there are three major reasons why the Ambio failed. First, the iPhone limitation was a particularly blatant slap in the face for a huge chunk of potential buyers. You could argue that at the time the Ambio was released, iPhones had some of the best cameras and most stable applications, but that's a pretty big stretch. Second, Sennheiser did a piss poor job marketing the Ambio. Who was this device for? The audiophile? The professional filmmaker? The gadget enthusiast? Sennheiser never really made this clear. The problem was compounded by inconsistent reviews online. Those who used iPhones to make documentaries and record YouTube content did have positive things to say about the Ambio, but audiophile reviewers either did not get the big picture or simply disliked the product for their own personal reasons. The third problem was the price. The original price was $300, and that cost immediately demanded far better construction, features, integration, and accessories. And the Ambio fails in all of these. So if the iPhone limitation and incompetent marketing weren't bad enough, the price tag was good reason to ignore the Ambio. However, an almost 75% decrease in the Ambio's original price tag changes the landscape quite a bit. So instead of thinking about the Ambio as a $300 gadget, let's look at it as an $80 accessory. But for what? Who should consider the Ambio? I think the Ambio really is made for hobbyists, both filmmakers and audiophiles alike. And let's examine both. Yes, you can buy a mirrorless camera and get very good high quality video but you'll end up spending several hundred and normally around $1,000 for a mirrorless camera with more than just a basic kit lens. Then you'll spend another $100 on a microphone. Then you'll want to buy additional SD cards and batteries. So very quickly, you can see your startup price getting well beyond $1,000. But if you already have a functioning smartphone, you don't need to spend that type of cash. You can buy a perfectly usable Zhiyun Smooth 4 gimbal for $100 and a microphone for another $50 to $100. You'll need a field recorder to capture audio to sync later and that can cost upwards of $100. So for a total investment of about $300, you could start making high definition films, documentaries or whatever from your smartphone. But having a microphone like the Ambio makes the process a lot simpler. You become the microphone. And most importantly, you don't stand out in a crowd. Whereas people with large cameras and video rigs present an obvious subject of distraction, someone who apparently is taking a photo on their smartphone is hardly noteworthy. If you're looking for anonymity in the crowd, then the Ambio helps you achieve that. 
audiophiles could benefit from the ambio as well. Binaural recordings are becoming more popular. Whether it is sounds of nature, soft speaking, or recording audio from headphones, people can use binaural microphones for audiophile needs. I imagine that the customer base of audiophiles who want to make binaural recordings is a fairly small one, but the segment does exist. There are alternatives to the Ambio, but all that I have found are either far larger setups or very expensive. Of course, you can create your own binaural rig by using two lavalier microphones and using an audio splitter. This is a bit finicky, but possible. However, for an all-in-one solution, the Ambio does make a compelling argument. This brings us to value. At $300, the Ambio is not value. That is a ridiculous price for this product. But $80 is perfect. For $80, you get a very capable IEM and unique binaural microphones. You get a form factor that is unassuming. You get application integration. You get plug and play functionality. The Ambio's IEM sound signature may or may not please you. The sub bass roll off, vocal push, and sibilance may be an immediate turnoff. But with some equalization, you could fine tune the sound. The Ambio's binaural microphones are nothing exceptional. You will not get class leading performance. You will get far more quiet, less noisy recordings with a larger microphone that has a proper dead cat windscreen while plugged into a quality field recorder. So, the Ambio does not excel at any one thing, but it does combine multiple aspects to create a very unique product. If you have no need for binaural microphones, then you may want to pass the Ambio. To you, it should remain an odd product. If you do want binaural microphones in an unassuming package, or if you're an audiophile who may want to get started in binaural recording, then the Ambio is the only product of its kind that I know of. And at $80, I think it is a worthwhile consideration. If nothing else, you will have a product that is unlikely to be re-released anytime soon.